so very good morning students <coughs> so today's class we are going to see the types of automation system actually the types of automation system based on two processes one is localized process and distributed process if we take the localized process it's covered under the small area as i already said localized process only focused on the small area okay if you come in distributed process it controls that means it's a process okay and distributed for the major that means large areas that, that means if we if we take a plan we having n number of process okay so in a n number of process we having sub process as like this okay for example here i show the localized process and distributed process of the water tap if you take the water tap what happens you can able to see the water supply line okay and here in localized process and distributed process also if we take the localized process we having only single tap if you going to distributed process we having multiple taps okay so as like that we having multiple systems in that multiple systems we having n number of subsystems okay if you come into real time systems okay what happens uh, if you take a chemical power, chemical plant power plant a process uh, any other process industry such as paper industry cement industries we having n number of systems like this in that n number of systems we having n number of subsystems that is called as uh, the we having n number of process okay each process is interdependent that means dependent for each other okay so <clears throat> what happens if we going to a mm, number of process that is distributed process that is a local that is distributed process we have to control the distributed process uh, with respect to automated systems okay, if you going to localized process we are going to control only a single system okay so first you going to see the localized process <clears throat> in the localized process the controller is locally connected to the operating system so the local communication line through communication interface if we take the controller so here what happens the process are there the process kind of instrumentation such as sensors and actuators and other devices that is processed okay with that means the sensors actuators monitor the process what's going on and transfers data to controller from the controller it transfers data to operator station the operator will observe what's happening in the process with help of this instrument is controller okay so what happens in the operator station is having the human interface systems that is a human interface panels we can observe what's happening there if anything is going wrong we are in the rights to control the system, entire process from this operator station if we come into this local communication it is transfer the data from the controller to the operator stations if we come into this side <coughs> this is the <coughs> lower end level of the automated systems that deals with uh, local communication functions from the process to controller with the help of the instrumentation okay so what happens if we take the process we having a power plant Are we having the uh, paper industry? We having a number. We having single process. If we take it's a it is a discuss about single process. <coughs> the single process is connected to the uh, it's a single process, but we having three or four sensors or actuators to monitor the process and transfer the data to controller. For example, that means here the sensors, the three sensors are two actuators. For example, you can say three sensors and two actuators. the three sensors and two actuators monitoring the process and transfers the data what's observed from the process to controller the controller transfers data to operating system it deals only with a single process that is a localized process okay. here what happens ethernet interface is needed for this process the local area network is okay for this process if for example if we take a lab <coughs> i want to monitor what the students are doing in the lab and pali i want to monitor the professor what whether he is teaching the class professor in the lab or not and pali i want i want to monitor whether the system is working or not okay so they having three processor the three sub processors in the system in a single process so i want to monitor all the three processors i want to monitor the all the three processors the process sensors and actuators and transfers data to controller and through the server to the server that is called as operator station from the operator station i can able to monitor what's going on there it is a localized process that is debited only for a single process in the single process we having a limited sub process so we have to monitor the limited sub process with the help of the sensors and sensors and we have to transfer data to controllers from the controller the data are transferred to operating systems the operator having the rights to monitor and having the rights to control the limited sub process and the process of the system okay so you are able to see the uh, diagram the schematic diagram of the uh, logical process so here what happened the process is that next category is instrumentation category next category is controller category next category is communication category 
that transfers data from the controller to the interface. And finally, what happens? Human interface. Okay. Human interface will monitor the data, will monitor the data, what's happening there, and having the rights to control the process. We so coming to next <coughs> globalized process. Before going to globalized process, first we can see uh, what's a centralized control system. It's called as CCS. So here, what happens? <coughs> you can able to see the schematic diagram of the centralized control systems. We are having a single controller. Single controller. If we take a same example, here what happens? Single process. In the single process, we are having a five sub process. So we are deputed on single controller. Here, n number of processes are there. If we take a power plant, we are having n number of power plants. Turbines, we have to monitor the turbines, what's going on there. We have to monitor the temperature. We have to monitor the process 3, process 4, process 5, boiler. We have to monitor the boiler 1. We have to monitor the boiler 2. We have to monitor the boiler 3. So we have to monitor <coughs> all the process. So all the process inputs, or we can say that in single process, we are having n number of processes, as I already said. So if you are having three process, all this subsystem in the three process will transfer the data to the controller with the help of the instrumentation systems, instrument subsystems, it deals with the sensors and actuators, and transfer to controller subsystem. From the controller subsystem, we can able to monitor the, the data what's happening here with the help of the human interface subsystem. That means here we, we can able to see uh, operating systems for boiler management, operating systems generation management, operating systems for other axillary management. Okay. So what happens? These are three process. Actually, there are three process here in the power plant process. In the three process, we are having n number of subsystems. All the subsystems and the process are monitored with the help of the sensors instrument, uh, instrument subsystems such as sensors and actuators and transfers data to controller subsystems. And here, what say? Uh, importance of this thing is we have only single controller subsystem and single controller subsystem will take care of the entire subsystems and transfers data to the several human interface subsystems that is called as operator systems. The OS indicates operator systems. <coughs> so if you go into previous side, that means the localized process we are having only one operator systems, only one controller, only one system, one, one instrumentation. It is debited to the limited sub process. Here, n number of sub are there, instrumentation systems will be subsystem taken care and transferred to controller, and we are having only single controller, centralized controller. We are not having a separate controller for each and every human interface of systems. <coughs> we are having a single controller, centralized controller, and single centralized controller will be taken care or will take care transfer data to for each and every operator sessions to monitor the process what's happening here and transfers data from the operator system to the power plant process. To control the process, we are not having a separate debited controllers. So what that's the thing is centralized control system with single and multiple operator stations, but a single controller. Okay. So here the diagram indicates schematic diagram indicates a single operator stations. We are having a multiple operator stations. Okay. So it simultaneously share the interactions with the process, the single controllers, which also improves efficiency and the process is large. For example, if I want, I, I want to monitor around 80 subsystems. So 80 subsystem process will be monitored by the instrumentation subsystems and transferred to control systems. And we have only single control subsystems. Single control subsystems, for example, we have to take around 1,134 I/O channels. 1,134 I/O channels will be transfer the data. Uh, it's okay for to transfer the data for the various uh, sub-process from various sub-process to the various OS operator station that's the human interface subsystems okay. but if that that is this a single controller is debited for the large process what's advantage is here <laughs> we are since we are a single controller we are having a minimum interface in, interface is very less and finally the transfers data in, very and transfers data with very transfers data in a fast and transfers data with respect to the fast response and but it's less expensive. Okay. What's the disadvantages? 
if you're going for n number of processors, it's very difficult to control the entire things. And if any problem happens in the controller, the entire systems, the entire whole systems will not work and it's very difficult to monitor the process. So further, what is a big controller? Okay. So what happens if any troubleshooting is happening, any maintenance is happening, you have to shut down the systems. If, if any troubleshoot is happening or maintenance is happening in the controllers, it's very difficult to monitor the entire process. Okay. And it's not suitable for the large process. That means uh, uh, if you have n number of subsystems around, we having more than 1024 subsystems or more than 200 subsystems. It is not advisable to go with the centralized control systems. Next, if you're going to the decentralized or distributed control systems, that is called as DCS. That's widely used in the industries, currently used in the process industries, and also nowadays that we are using the distributed control systems also in manufacturing industries. <coughs> so here, what happens? We having a single, we having a several controllers for several process. <coughs> to control the process. If you go into previous slide, what I said already, here we having only a single controller will take in care of the three or four OA systems. Thought happens the transfer the response time will be somewhat slow. Okay. Even the response time is good. If any problem the controller is very difficult to monitor the process. But if you're going here, we are deputed as each and every controller for each and every process. For example, if you take a boiler process, generation process, accelerated process, same process, we are debiting single debit controller for the separate process, for this boiler process, generation process, and accelerated process to monitor what's happening in the boiler process, what's happening in the corresponding process with the help of this operating systems. So here, the response time is very high when comparing to the centralized control systems. And finally, if any troubleshooting is happening, any problem is happening, we can able to shut off the corresponding systems and we have to monitor the remaining system. It's very easy to control the huge process of the system. Here, what happens, it's a multiple operating systems are available and we can share the data within the process with the different controllers, which is which efficiency is higher than the centralized control systems. If we are having, if we're going to here, we are having centralized control systems, uh, centralized control system, single controller, and you transfer the data between this, between these three process. If you want to transfer data from year to year, it again goes to controller and transfer data from control to year. Okay. It takes so much time. So what happens? It's very difficult to monitor the process, but okay, anyway, the efficiency is good. But if you come into this and these two control systems, the efficiency is too high is to why when comparing to the centralized control systems. Here advantage is we are having a single controller, even though failures happen, it do not affect the total automation systems. <coughs> but what's the problem is it's expensive. We have to purchase each and every controller, we have to debit each and every control for each and every stations. But since I with respect to cost it's expensive and it's more technical technical person have to be there for each and every stations. For each and every OI stations. <coughs> and finally, the single control failure, would, what I said is already a single controller will not affect the entire systems. But here, each controller is smaller in size and troubleshooting, we can able to control it and maintenance is very easy. <coughs> Next slide, we are going to distributed process. It's a group of as I already said, we are having so many sub process that's localized global process. If we connected so many localized sub process, that is a global process or distributed process. So these are the localized sub process one, sub process two, sub process three. Okay, we are having deputy each controllers for and each controller is taken care by the human interface subsystem that is called as operating systems. This is also called as a several sub process which taken care by the operating systems. Okay, that's that's a coming under localized process. Coming to distributed process, <coughs> n number of localized process are connected together, and that is coming under one topology that is called as distributed process. The control center is there. So here, the control station is nearby the con the control is there. Control station is nearby the instrumentation process, and the operator system is there. It's also nearby the operator process. For example, if you take a cement plant, 
we are having n number of process process 1 process 2 process 3 process 4 process 5 the process 1 is located in somewhere within 150 for example if you take one, the plant is located in 150 acres the, so within the process 1 is located in, in the in that uh, 150 acres in some other location process 2 is, is located in the same location uh, same one acre 150 acres in some other location okay but we can able to take the data from the corresponding process and we can able to monitor the data with a single operating systems or a number of operating systems in a common place here if you come in distributed process we are having a process 1 in plant 1 in in the location of uh, south india after for example if you take tamil nadu we are having a <coughs> plant 2 is in andhra plant 3 is in 4 we can able to monitor the process okay that is a distributed process for example if you take a electricity generation systems we are having an operator we are having a monitor station is that substation the substation consists of so many panels the humans can monitor what's happening in the substation in substations we are having so many process are there okay that substation means uh, we are having a in substation we are having a so many we in substation can consist of so many sub process okay so substation consists of area 1 area 2 area 3 area 4 we can able to monitor what's happening in area 1 within uh, which is uh, away from 300 kilometers we can able to monitor uh, which is away from 4 and 5 which is uh, which we can able to monitor another area which is located away from 450 kilometers we can monitor area 3 which is located within 150 kilometers okay that is a substation that means here what we are saying that the centralized operator station is there but the processes are located in different areas different geographical areas different geographical areas as i already said different geographical areas and you can able to monitor the process okay and you can able to monitor the process and it's also having the rights to control the process okay so i am my plant one is located in bombay my plant two is located in <coughs> goa plant three is located in tamil nadu yes so you can take a single operator systems and you can able to monitor the plus one, one you can monitor the process what's happening in bombay what's happening go process two what's happening in goa what's happening process three what's happening in tamil nadu okay so that is called as a distributed process <laughs> <clears throat> if we take industry and we monitor this process and sub-process that is called as a distributed control systems which is coming into localized process if we come into distributed process it's located in different areas we can able to monitor the process <clears throat> so it's a group of interconnected localized sub-process it is a localized process sub-process system plant 1 plant 2 is another area that is one of the localized sub-process systems Plan 3 is another area, it's localized subprocess systems. We are interconnecting all the localized subprocess and we are taking care to control the systems. Okay. So control center, that means what we are saying that uh, this is a control center, it consists of hardware and software, that is operator systems or human interface subsystems. It's located in a common place. From that common place, we can able to monitor the different localized subprocess in different areas, geographical areas. So how we can transfer the how will the data transferring from the instrumentation system control system to the operator system means through the remote communication. Here, what happens? The response timing is there. So we have to transfer data as quick as possible. And parallel we have to if anything is happened beyond the limit, the operators having the rights to control the data. As quick as possible, the remote communication have to transfer data from this subsystem, from this two subsystems to the operator subsystems, from the operator subsystem to the control system and instrumentation subsystems. Okay. So what happens? So this is located in geographical area one, process for process one, and for process two, this is separately located in geographical area two. So, but the common operating systems, process one is there, process two in Tamil Nadu, process three in Kerala, all the processes are interconnected in the operating systems. Okay, and you can able to monitor what's happening there in the different locations. Okay, yes, we can have the right to shut down the system. So if you take a nuclear power plant, it's very difficult uh, to uh, enter into to enter into the several processes. Uh, this for the humans okay what happens so we are having the control in one station if anything is happened beyond the limits if the temperature is too high in the uh, power plant what if you want to shut down the system it is not manually controlled yes we have to shut down the systems from the single operating systems i can able to control systems from delhi which is uh, where the plant is located in tamil nadu okay, as like that we can able to control the systems okay that is distributed distribu distribu process what's the main advantage is what's the only important thing is we have to transfer the data from the localized Sub process which is located in different geographic areas to the uh, to the control center. This is control center. Okay, the control center of advanced softwares. Okay, so 
the controller here what we are saying is controller is remotely con controlled to the operator station over the remote communication through the serial communication interface serial communication interface that's a serial communication interface okay so it's also <coughs> called a simple remote control systems or large network control systems it depends upon the applications it depends upon the applications i am having plant 1 plant 2 plant 3 okay in different geographic areas in tamil nadu in kerala bombay so that is called as the <coughs> remote control systems okay or large network control that is called as a large network control systems if you come into remote control systems in tamil nadu itself my plant 1 is located in tambaram my plant 1 is located in the uh, madurai my plant 3 is located in tiruchi my plant 4 is located in coimbatore metropolitan cities yes that is called as a simple remote control systems anyway it's located in different areas different large areas in the single state that is called as a simple remote control systems if it's located in different geographical areas or different states in different states within the india that is called as a large network control systems okay anyway we are saying the distributed process means single control center will take in care to control the different process which is located in different areas different geographical areas that's most important if you come into remote control systems for example your operator control center is there and the remote station is located in some other around 500 kilometers away from the control systems okay remote communication line is the most important thing here because we have to control the systems as quick as possible that's response time okay from the if the controller want to control this or want to shut down the wall or want to open the wall or want to close the wall okay what are the commands is giving from the control center is want to transfer the data as quick as possible with help of the serial communication interface okay that's a basic interface so nowadays what happens we are having parallel communication interface also there now we are seeing the serial communication interface okay so is a control center moment is controls remote located process over communication line what's a communication line is serial communication interfaces okay <laughs> so here what happens the control system the control center it's a operate system monitoring the process and issue the manual control commands remote station is there okay it's interfaced with the control systems our operator systems and get the data from the operator and transfers data to the operator and what's the master station is here is the system control system is uh, control system control center is a master station okay and finally how we transfer data means through the central communication interface <coughs> coming to the network control systems so already i said simple remote control systems large network control systems remote control system means operator system is common i am having a remote station remote station 1 in uh, tiruchi remote station 2 in madurai remote station 3 in uh, coimbatore is it possible to control the rem all the remote stations with a single control center yes that's coming into remote control systems if you coming to network control systems that is extension of remote control systems it's located in different areas okay it's located in different areas <coughs> okay so in different geographical areas yes it's possible to, is it right is it possible to control the different process from different geographic areas to the control center yes it's possible so we having the multiple communicable controllers okay multiple communicable controllers is also control the serial communication interface the same process okay but it's supposed to look at in different geographical areas the same process it's extension of rcs that's the thing okay but what advantages here what subject of this thing is the plant one is located in tamil nadu plant one two is located in bombay plant three is located in West Bengal. Okay. So, <clears throat> so how the data is transferred to the control center? Because the data transfer is most important here. Okay. If it located here within the plant is not a problem. We can able to transfer the data within the local area network. But here, what happens? We are proposing a wide area network. Okay. So, we have to wide area network with the response time. That means with the fast processing speed. Okay. So yes, we have to debut a wide area network with the fast responsing speed. Then only it transfers data to the operator systems as quick as possible, <coughs> and can controls the several processes. Okay. And finally, it shared the common long distance communication network for communication with the control system. Yes, what I said is it share. Okay. If it's local area network, we have some limits. It transfers data within some uh, kilometers or some meters. But if you go into wide area network, it transfers wherever the station is there. Even the state's data is uh, central is uh, located in the US. I, and the, from the US, I want to monitor the data. Yes, it's possible. Okay, with the help of the wide area network. Okay, this here we are proposing serial communication interface. So <laughs> each controller manages own local automation. Okay, independently. 
okay so since we are in white area networks we can able to monitor operator station can able to operate us can able to monitor our engineering station can able to monitor we can say operator station engineering station can able to can monitor the what's happening here again okay if it goes beyond the limits he is having the rights to control systems okay each controller can communicate to the control center only not with this any intermediate intermediate controllers okay <coughs> Controller centers, controllers only, and controllers having the rights to control systems. For example, what I said, example, electrical transmission network is a distributed process. Okay, where are the localized process are substations. We are in substation one in the area one, substation two in uh, area two within 350 kilometers or within 100 kilometers. Substation area one is within 50 kilometers. Okay, uh, area two is within 100 kilometers. Area three is within <coughs> 500 kilometers. Okay, so what happens? Electrical transmission is a distributed process. Okay, we are having different geographical areas within 500 kilometers. Within 500 kilometers, take a consider it. We are having five substations. For every 100 kilometers, we are having one substation. Okay, so what happens? So we have to take. We have to transmit the power. Okay, to all the. We have to monitor what. We have to monitor the power is transmitting. Now what's happening within every 100 kilometers? The transmission lines. Okay, so for that we are having substation. We are having one substation for every 500 kilometers. From the substation, we can monitor. That means the operators or control center can monitor whether the transmission is happening properly or not for every 100 kilometers. Okay, so that's a example for the network control systems. What they are saying is, for example, is for we are dealing with 500 kilometers. But major example is the instrumentation substation control systems are located in different geographical areas, different areas. Okay, in Tamil Nadu, West Bengal, Kerala. <laughs> Why not we can control the plant? Yes, it's possible. That is coming under the network control systems. Within that certain kilometers, okay, within around 500 kilometers to 300 kilometers, that's coming under the localized process. That's uh, distributed process coming under remote control systems. Okay, going for the different geographic areas, for example, different states. Yes, it's coming under network control systems. <coughs> so, and one more important thing is front-end processor. Sir, what's a front-end front processor? If you take a manufacturing automation, what happens? We know what in by DNC. Okay, so we are having n number of CNC machines, and n number of CNC machines having a single uh, uh, n number of CNC machines having a different uh, separate controllers. For example, CNC machine one means CNC machine having a separate controller. CNC machine two means CNC machine having a separate controller. CNC machine three means CNC machine three is having a separate controller. Okay, that is a CNC machine one, two, three. All the CNC machines interconnected together, and they are having a Single control that is called as DNC machines. The same as like that front end process here. Okay, <laughs> here communication links over a single interface are slow and less reliable due to the remote connection. So, what is the problem? What we are facing in the remote control system and the network control system is since we are proposing a wide area network, the communication interface is a cell communication interface. Okay, so what happens? <laughs> there may be a okay, delay in, in transferring the data from. Instrumentation substation control substation to operating systems or from the control control substation to the instrumentation substations. There may be a delay in the data. <coughs> so for that to minimize the extensive processing time, okay, what happens? We are having a front-end processor. Okay. So front-end processor, what happens? The root communication load is shifted to independent platform. That means uh, what we are saying that we are having wide area network, it transfers to front-end processor, one intermediate processor or one intermediate station. We can say uh, indirectly say that that is one intermediate station will transfer the data, will take in all the data and process the data parallelly to all the operator systems. So you can able to see uh, <coughs> operator systems. Okay. So here we can able to see find the difference what here controller one instrument process, controller two instrument process two, we are having a wider network and the control center. Okay. So what happens here? One control center is there. Okay. So what happens here? One single operator system is here. Single same operator. So up to this, yes, the same thing is here. From here, we are having a different operator systems to monitor what's happening for North region, South region, East region, West region. So, if we are having a single operator to monitor the North region, South region, West region, West region, yes, it's possible, but what happened? It's somewhat complicated. So, what we've done here in front end processor, the same hierarchical structure of this uh, structure, lower end level to front end processor level, the same as like that. The, um, Network control systems, okay. But here, what happens from here? Okay. So, from the single control center, we are having the multiple control center 
in the same area in the in the, in the common in the same area that means in the same area means in the this is located in bombay and this is located in different control center located in different areas hey what happens this is a this is a server this is a main area this is a located in bombay in this bombay plant itself in this bombay monitoring control center itself we having a <coughs> single control center this one we can say that is control center the control center takes the data from the process 1 process 2 process 3 it's located in different geographic areas through wide area network through serial interface communication okay and after that what happens we having a parallel communication and interfaces okay and for with different multiple operating systems to monitor north region south region west region west region okay instead of to monitor all the data in the single control station that is called as we can say the front end processor okay it's called as a single control station and it is categorized and it stands for the data to the multiple operating systems okay so what we are saying that it's very easy to monitor what's happening in individual in every process okay if we take the process control of process 1 we having 1000 process sub process if we take the this is a process 2 Okay, if you have thousand process, as like that, we have three thousand sub process. Okay, we have to monitor three thousand sub process in the single controller is possible, but it's difficult. It takes somewhat time. Okay, so what happens? Yes, the same thing is here. Okay, the same thing. What's happening here? The same thing is here. There are the wireless 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 network. Okay, we are transferring data to single controller. So single controller will be categorized into different controllers. Single controller. Single controller means what we are saying that here is a operator station, a control station, control center station, or we can say that human interface of systems. Okay, we can categorize, we can uh, rename as human interface of system or operator stations. Okay, from the single operator systems, we are categorized into multiple operator systems to monitor what's happening in north region, south region, east region, and west region. So why? It's to improve the performance of operator systems. Single or perform. Single operator wanting to monitor thousand process process what's happening in the process one, again again to monitor around thousand process in the process two and thousand process in the process three. Okay, it's very difficult to monitor the around three thousand process in the single control center. So for that only, we are having we are categorized into we are <coughs> segregated we are divided into the single control center into the multiple control center to monitor the process of north region, south region, east region, west region. Okay, so why? It's improve the performance of the operator stations. Okay, so we can able to monitor where is the problem exactly. Okay, why not say it's not possible in the remote? Yes, it's possible, but it takes some more time. Okay, here what happens? Yes, we can able to find out where the troubleshooting is happening as quick as possible in comparison to the the station. That's called as remote station. Okay. <coughs> as I said, come here, come here, distributor. So distributor. So generally, distributed process. Distributed means all the control elements are spread through the plant and not centralized. Okay. We are in the process one in different area, process one in different area, process in the different area. Okay. Distributed. Okay. The, the process are distributed. Okay. So the distributed process I want to control with a single controller or different different controllers. Okay. So <coughs> it supervises and governs the operation. That's a distributed. Distributed means the process are distributed and I want to control the process distributed process. Okay. So what happens in the, the DCS, the system is used to supervise and control the whole plant. It means all the controls are distributed throughout the systems. That's called as DCS. Here we are, also I already said, three stations are there, engineering stations, operator stations, automation stations. So if we come into <coughs> automation uh, engineering stations, we have in the primary and supervisory controller, which is taken care of. See, so what happens, we having, we can able to see, here we can able to see the front end processor, from the front end processor, we are having a number of processes. Am I correct? So what happens here? So front end process is located in some other area. For example, okay, front end front end process is located in server room. From the front end processor, we are having different operator stations, and a single operator can able to monitor different operators stations. This is located in different geography area. That's possible. Okay, but in a single operator, single control station, a single operator systems, a single systems. To monitor the n number of process, sub process, that's very difficult. It's possible, but it's very difficult. So you can you can find you can observe one person, one operator observing the different operator substations in different geography areas. Yes, it's possible. Okay, that is taken care of by the single controller. Single controller means single front end processor, which is located in the server room. Okay, so if you come in engineering station, it's a primary and supervisory controller. Okay. 
So if it's a primary supercontroller, monitors what's happening in the plant with the help of softwares. Okay. So that software means what it's user friend software. Okay, it's all the things are happening in the touch point. That means if you want to control stations, we, we can able to operate can able to touch the things and what's observe what's happening. And we want to shut down the walls from the with the help of the touch panel itself. Okay. The help of the touch panel itself, we can able to control systems. Okay, that's called as human interface. Human machine interface. We're going to see the separate uh, human machine and separate topic is human interface in the forthcoming slides, in the forthcoming classes. Okay. So <coughs> and parallel. So you, you can able to change the you can the control means if anything is going beyond the limit, yes, he's having the rights to control the things. Okay. That means he's having the rights to creating a new loops, modifying the sequence, modifying the programs. That's a sequence means modifying the programs, what's have existing, what's in the happening in the exist what's in the existing process. Okay. With respect to that, with respect to that uh, needs. That is called as the uh, engineering station. If you come into operator station, yes, we can able to see the diagram station. The operator station is also called a second level monitoring. It's a supreme level monitoring. This is a second level monitoring. Okay. Uh, so, and controlling unit is a PC or any type of human interface. That means, what I am saying that here, <coughs> yeah, this also can, we can say the front end processor. Okay, front end processor. Okay. So, operator station is debited. The operator station, we can say that operator station is that for each every controllers we have an operator station. For each every another process we have an operator station. For each every another operator station. Okay. So if you can see the operator station for process one, process two, process three, process four. Okay. That's the thing we are saying here. For all the process will be connected with the engineering process, engineering substations. Okay. So operator subsystem means second level monitoring. Okay. This also one of the category. This also coming under the human machine interface. The operator. Okay. Can operate systems and not having the rights to alter the program or not having the rights to command the process okay, as per their needs. Okay. Commanding or changing or controlling, having a controlling system, controlling rights, all the rights are coming under the category of engineering stations. Here modification is not possible, but you can able to monitor what's happening there, okay, operator. Okay. But you can is not having the rights to control the process. Okay, from the operator system only, from the operator station only, okay, the data is transferred to engineering station. And if they are having the rights to monitor what's happening there. In, in, in meantime, the operator stations, the operator can able to observe what's happening there. Even the engineering station is not monitored. Okay, he will, uh, he will have the rights to transfer the, he will have the rights to inform the engineering station. And engineers will, the guys who is working in the engineering station, okay, <coughs> will change the sequence or having the rights to modify the programs and having the rights to control the process. Okay. And coming to next, automation subsystems. So here automation systems, we can able to find out the, what is, it is a, out of the DCS, that means out of the DC systems called as automated systems. Automated systems, it indicates what's that. So it, in, it consists of two substations. One is a controller substation and an instrumentation subsystem. The instrumentation subsystem taken care, they uh, taken care of the part of sensors and activators are interfaced with the real time systems. Okay, and controller data, controllers, that means controllers is taken care to transfer data from the real time system to the operator station and engineering station. Okay, so here. Two categories coming under the operating automation systems, controller subsystem and the instrumentation subsystem. Instrumentation subsystems will take in care the sensors and actuator spot, which is interface to the real time system, and transfers data to controller substation. Controller step substation will transfer the data to the operating substation and the engine station. Okay. So how the data transfer is happening? That's most important. So through the help of the wide area networks and LAN networks. If it's a localized process, LAN is okay. If you're going for wide area network, if you're going for the, the uh, distributed process, we can go for a wide area network. This is a LAN network. Okay. Going for wide area network, yes, you have to go for the. And if you're going for a distributed process, we have to go for the wide area networks. Okay. So, yeah, you can say the automation system, real time exchange. What the thing is that we have to transfer the okay, uh, communication part, interface, communication part, instrumentation subsystem part, control subsystem part. Okay. All the three. Uh, subsystem parts, all the three subsystems taken care to transfer data from the real-time system to the uh, operator station and engineering station. Okay, that's the thing we are saying. Automated system, real-time exchange. Real-time exchange means we are transferring the real-world data to the real-world data means real process data to the operator systems with the help of the instrumentation subsystem, controller subsystem, and the communication subsystems. Okay. <coughs> and this is the levels of DCS. As I already said in the class, we are having several levels. Local level, that means if you come into the field level, unit level, field level, uh, 
operator level management level erp level okay anyway we, are, we, are, we will cut off the die level iron iron level management level erp level coming to the lower level so here what happens we have a plan in saying the micro controller sorry instead of micro controller we can propose the plc okay so we also can we also control the plc okay so control the plc is possible and we also control the plc so each and every plc for example we have here four plcs so two plcs are taken care by the super easy computers own controller two plcs taken care by the controller cast either if you going to process one yes the same process repeated okay two plcs taken care by the own controller another controllers okay and after that what happens on separate computer okay on super controller will taken care this two controllers on super will taken two controllers okay and finally this will taken care by the one computer center that means this is a engineering station this is a operator station this is a operator station for the process one process one okay for example we can say that rcs remote control system this is on this one remote control system this is one remote control system or we can say that this is one large network control system it is located in tamil nadu this is one large network control system which is located in west bengal okay so what happens each process which is located in tamil nadu is having the separate os separate os or separate front end separate front end processor which is connected to the common controller okay which is connected to the which is connected which is connected to the engineering workstation here operator station here operator station okay so operator station can able to monitor what's happening in this process one okay what's happening process one but is not having the rights to enter into the plan or enter into the program or enter into the uh, not modify the sequence what's happening i want to change the process i want to control the process if you are not having the rights to control the process okay we have to transfer the data from there only the order will be get it from that uh, engineering engineer station and the transfer data to here okay and parallel branch is control so here we are observing we are observing this operator station we are observing operators are observing and not having the rights to modify or alter the programs or alter the sequence okay So here you can find uh, engineering station and operator station. Okay. So what happens? And finally, come into ASRT system. Okay. Real time action systems. So here we field elements are there. Okay. The sensors are there. Processes are there. We are in number of processes. In the we are in number of sub processes in a single process. Okay. So what happens? <coughs> so <coughs> all the processes are interconnected with the Ethernet cables. Okay, Ethernet cables. This is a instrumentation subsystem. Okay, and this is a controller subsystem. Okay, controller subsystem means it's one of the DAC. Okay, uh, which is one of the DAC. Okay, what happens? It take it transfers the, it takes the data from the it acquires the data from the each and every uh, elements of the process. Okay, elements from the process and transfers the data to the engineering station or operating system with the help of the automation system real time extension. That is it. Uh, all the data is transferred. All the data is transferred. Okay, so what happens from the DAC card? The data is transferred to the this is a controller instrumentation subsystem. This is a controller subsystem. Okay, so what happens from the instrumentation subsystem? The data is transferred to the controller system through the profile bus. Okay, profile bus. Okay, you can able to find the Ethernet two types of uh, communication are there. Industrial Ethernet profile bus. Okay, so net in, in, in Ethernet is can interconnect. That means Ethernet is taken care to interconnect the to transmit to find out. The data or to transfer data from the real world process to the DAC. Okay, from the DAC to the automation system real time extension, we go for profile bus. Okay, what happens? We can able to process the data. We can able to so we can say that we can able to process data. This is a controller. Okay, this instrument is of systems. This is a controller. Okay, so your DAC card is there. What happens? DAC card plays a vital role between the real time process and the controller. Okay, but it's not possible to tra transfer the data directly to the A controller substation. This instrumentation subsystem is a controller substation. You are not having the rights to transfer data directly from the instrumentation subsystem to the controller substation. Okay. So in mean intermediately we are having the DAC. The DAC will be okay connected with the help of the industrial internet. Okay. Ethernet cables to monitor the process what's happening and the yes, signals are processed. Signals are processed, analyzed, and conditioned. And transfers data to the control subsystem through the profile bus. Okay, from the control subsystem only, we are transferring the data to the operator systems and the engineering stations. Okay, so we are transferring data from parallel simultaneously to the operator systems and parallel to the engineering systems. Okay, 
Copper system located in, located in the corresponding geographic area. Engineering station is located in different is located in the common one area. From the engineering station, engineering station it's a common one located in common one area. And this is the process. Okay. OIS operating systems with the automation with the extension and the remaining things located in uh, area one, area two, area three, area four. Okay. <coughs> so what the schematic diagram indicates that. We are transferring the data from the real time process to the controller substation, not directly through a DAC card with the help of the Ethernet connections, okay, network connections, right internet connections. From there, we have to transfer data to the profile bus. And from there, control system, we transfer data to engineering station operating systems, so human interface panels or operating systems with the help of the Ethernet cables. Okay, local network or wide network. So we are not providing generally not providing local network within this local within this own. Within this location, okay, but if you're going for different dark locations, you are providing the wide area networks, okay, with parallel communications. Here you can able to see the operator station buttons, <laughs> operator station buttons, okay. So buttons, you can able to find these are buttons. This is provided in the operator system and also the operating engineering system also, okay. So okay. So what happens? Uh, operators can able to monitor, touch, uh, touch these buttons and find out what's happening there. Okay, but when it is going beyond wrong, going wrong, is not having right to modify as already said. That taken care of by the engineering works, engineering stations. Okay. So these are the different types of the buttons which is provided in the uh, TCS systems. Okay, to monitor the process and control the process. So that is the uh, buttons, common buttons. I want to display the alarm. Okay. I want uh, and uh, if you want to lock the process, I exit stop it. I, I want to exit from that process one, or sub process one. I want to mean I want to enter into process two. Okay, as like that we can able to monitor. Okay. If this is a control wall, for example, if you having a if you take that uh, any process plans, most probably the walls are there. Okay, to uh, maintain the level of the temperature or increase the level of temperature. Okay, the wall should be open or closed. So this is a <coughs> Good conditions mode. We have to. We can. We are. We can monitor the uh, conditions of the walls, which is located in the process. Good conditions mode. Bad conditions interlock. The kind of things locked means we can able to monitor. Okay. So and they come into walls. On off walls. Okay. On off walls. As we already studied in hydraulic pneumatic systems, we having different number of walls. Okay. So we having different types of walls. For different types of walls, we having different types of on off systems. Okay. So for each of I mean, and every things are interconnected with the. Each and everything are having the different uh, different representations. Okay, and now you can even having the right to control or open the walls from the operating systems and engineering substations. And this for pump and motors. So these are most important things. These are most important components. What there is in the process station, process station. Okay, pumps, motors, walls. Okay, as these are the most important components. What are using the process automation side. Going to cement industry. Yes. Nuclear power plant industry. I want to cut off the walls. I want to open the walls. I want to maintain the temperature, the boiler. So we try to open the if the part. The temperature is too high means I want to open the wall. Then then the water goes out. Okay, automatically the temperature comes down. No sir, I want to increase the temperature. Try to shut off the wall. Automatically what happens? The temperature is going to be increased. As like that. So what happens? The pump and motor alarms or walls plays a vital role. Are the three major com are the major components in the process automation side. So we have different types of pumps. Pumps. Yes, and probably you can able to find out different types of uh, indication of that to control the pump and motors. And see, <coughs> this is a front end panel. Okay, front end panel of the engineering workstations. You can able to find out this is a process one. See, process one, process two, process three. System system, which is located in Jalf area. We can take this as a uh, extension of RCS. Okay, it's remote control systems. Okay. So what happens? Which is located in different area. This area one. What happens in the area one? We are in sub process one, sub process two, sub process three, sub process four, sub process five. Okay. So what happens? Uh, we can able to might or we can say that we can say like that. This is the process one which is located in Tamil Nadu. This is process one which is located in different other geographical area. This process alone located in other areas, other states. Uh, it's located in other in other uh, other 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 country as like that. We can able to mind other things. Each for example this. We, this let's put this process. This is a single process. In the single process, we having the n number of process. Okay, this is having n number of sub process which is come under the category of the single process. Okay, here you can able to see the for example the wall conditions. Okay, wall is open or closed. Okay, what type of wall? Okay, from here. Okay, where is signal is going to the wire? 
a temperature controller or any sensors. Okay. So as like that, we are in the steam, steam for, for controlling the steam. What happens? We are in several DC system. That means single DC system. We are having several uh, front end panel. We are having uh, we can able to see the graphical user interface. This is a graphical user interface. We are having a number of graphical graphical user interface programming is there. Okay. So what happens? If I want to shut down, I want, this, is a, this is a circuit breaker. Okay, I want to switch on circuit breaker. Okay, so if the temperature, if the temperature is, for example, if the temperature is uh, comes down, I want to enhance the circuit. I want to engage circuit breaker. Circuit breaker will lose the energy to the heater, and it is going to store and it is going to heat the water. And if the temperature is reached, means what happens again? The temperature control signal that will be monitored by the temperature control and temperature controller. We cut off the circuit breaker automatically. What happens? The power is going to the heater is cut off. Okay, so the small process. As like we are having n number of processes here, we can take the turbines. Okay, and probably we can have some small small turbines. We can able to control what's the process happening here. Okay, we are starting from the compressors, valves, pumps, motors, heaters. Okay, sensors also there. Actuator is also there. Drives also there. Okay, so this is one of the this is one of the main process. In the main process, we have n number of sub process. This is interconnected. Okay. So you can also find the interconnection is there also there. What's the whether transit data, data is transferred to from this that this turbine to this turbine? Okay, that's also possible. Coming to application of DCS, yes. <coughs> so DCS are widely used in the process station, what I already said, chemical plants, power grids, mining industries, parametrical plants, oil refineries, and nuclear power plants. So, it's used in the cement industries, paper industries. Nowadays, you, nowadays the, the this is also used in the manufacturing industry also for manufacturing a different course in a single assembly line. That's also possible. Okay. Coming to the functional features of DCS, <coughs> sir. What's the advantage of DCS? Yes, system configuration, communication is uh, communications are there. We can able to transfer data as quick as possible. Control is the easy. Control is feasible. Uh, Control is that means uh, mode of control is uh, fast. Alarms are there if anything goes beyond the limits, and troubleshooting will be easily analyzed, identified. Diagnostics will be easily happen. We just put the safety side, operator safety side, and system safety side. Okay, so if we, if we take the process plan, what's the price problem is operator safety and system safety. These two safeties are most important. Okay, so what happens? Uh, we have to maintain the two safety, system safety and operator safety. We have to we have to maintain us from the industry. Okay. What happens? We have to propose the DC systems. So automated system to monitor what's happening there. Okay, that's a, so dynamics. Dynamics can able to done easily. Okay, and parallelly, what happens? We also record the data database. We also database management systems there in the engineering station. We can easily recall the data. Okay, and also what happens? Database also that to record all the data. Security. <coughs> so the uh, security is also there. Engineering workstation operating systems. Okay, so. The operator who is trained can have to work, have to work the system. Okay, the operator who is not trained, the unmanned, some, un, uh, some other unknown person who entered the system and want to control system is not possible because uh, it's a programmed and the operator guys only can able to work the system. They will put the security side, and it's uh, this is, is easy to integrate the n number of process and sub process okay, with the debited controllers. Okay, that means with a debit controllers means a front end processor with the different operator stations. Okay, as we already say, seen in the local area station, uh, that means the local area stations. Okay, coming to functional architecture of DCS, <coughs> sir. As I already said, machine processing is that we are having input or field devices, input output devices, and input output devices means that field signals are there in IO means IO cores. I will convince what I said, data cards, data acquiring cards. The data acquiring cards, what's the main part of data acquiring cards? That you acquire the data, process the data, with respect to your, need, with respect to your needs, and transfer data to the controller. From the controller, it transfers the data to the human machine interface. Okay. So, controller substation is there, communication will be happened, control execution will happen, and transfers data from here and the IO system, from the data card to the human machine interface. Okay. Control systems will take care of these three things, most important three things. Coming to human interface, yes, okay, operator station is there and engineering station is there, okay. So database, we can take the database, configuration also possible, dynamics also possible, let's put the security and safety side, 
communication is there. So we have to transfer the data from here to there as quick as possible. Okay. And if anything goes beyond the limit, yes, it indicates in the graphic side, graphical user interface, the graphical user interface, the operators, there's no need to get the program knowledge. Okay. We enter into the corresponding subsystem by by entering by touching the process. Okay. Automatically what happens is the graphical based interface. If you touch the process for sub process one, okay, what are the components? What are process involved in the sub process? It will display it in the it will display it in the graphical it is, it is displayed in the panel and you can able to monitor easily. That means troubleshooting will be done as quick as possible and that means diagnosis will be done as quick as possible and it's user friendly. There's no need to write a program. <coughs> Okay, and uh, there's not having good uh, operators not needed to write have a good knowledge or train knowledge in the programming side. Okay, and apart from that, we have the alarm processing there. Okay, so this also communication also communication the transient database is also there. Okay, this is the functional architecture of DCS. So so far, <coughs> we have seen the uh, local localized process, distributed process. In the localized process, we are seeing the centralized control systems and decentralized control systems coming to distributed systems. Uh, we have found what's uh, what in by these uh, distributed process. In the distributed process, we have seen the local area and uh, local area network stations and the remote control systems. And we have seen what are the control panels. Okay, and we have seen what are the functional features of DCS and what is the functional architecture of DCS, where we are using the DCS, and parallelly. <coughs> so, what's uh, what's uh, we're using, and we have seen the well, Operator state buttons, and we are seeing that this is the uh, what is the impact of ES and OX panels. We are supporting the industry three and profile buses, <coughs> and we are seeing the what's the levels in DCS. That's most important the levels in DCS. Okay, and we have seen we have seen the engineering station, operating station, automation systems. Okay, thank you.